Hey guys, it's Bina, and here we are with our level 85 update on the Shapeshifter Pulverized build. So, I made a couple of adjustments to the build. Um, not anything major, but still going strong. So, we switched from uh, having uh, the accelerating aspect, which gives us attack speed when we crit with our core skill on our amulet. Switched that one to the gloves, and then we put the fortify one on the amulet to gain 60% uh, increased damage when we are uh, based on our amount of fortify. So that makes our, our pulverizers hit uh, way harder. And um, yeah, we lose a little bit of attack speed. So before then, I used to have the attack speed on my amulet just because um, I would want to have... I would want to have more smoothness of gameplay and like having more attack speed makes you able to go faster through the dungeons and everything. But now I feel like I need to have more damage to be able to one-shot things uh, even more. So yeah, that's one of the reasons why I did that. And so, um, yeah, this is the main the main thing we changed. I also tried a couple of things with the Barber Heart and the um, there's another Wrathful Heart that basically switches every 20 kill between having attack speed, resource uh, resource gen, well, basically refilling your entire resource pool uh, when you hit something and then giving you a barrier. So I tested both. Barber still seems to be the best. Um, it's kind of weird switching into the barber when you're used to like having direct damage because for example small monsters if you don't absolutely if you don't one shot them and you would two shot them then uh they just keep being at full health right so you don't really know how much health they have left before you you, you uh you're able to um to move to the next pack but um yeah i'm still trying out things with the barber um i i think it's going to be absolutely the best gem um j just because it deals an incredible amount of damage in an area around the enemy that you're um, that you're hitting, and uh, with pulverize having so much so good AOE, basically every single mob just explodes. So yeah, I think the barber is still is going to be the best, especially for pushing for speed farming, probably as well because you know it's just like an extra damage multiplier. So uh, who doesn't like damage, right? Um, yeah, so that's pretty much uh, the only changes we've made. Um, from level 79 and uh we'll go into the uh again the skill tree the paragon board and everything so here we are in game and we'll go over the aspects that we need again so uh you need the quicksand aspect to get the slow with earth skills um this will synergize very well with some other things that we'll see um on your chest piece i'm using insatiable fury but you could use a defensive chest piece with a disobedience aspect this is only to get access to more damage to speed farm a little bit more so that is why I'm using this. Uh, acceler uh, accelerating on the gloves, like I said, I switched the accelerating with the retaliation uh, from the gloves to the amulet. Um, our pants, we're using the pants of the Mending Stone with uh, the duration of Earth and Bulwark, basically giving us access to more uptime on, on, on Unstoppable um, and a little bit more tankiness with the barrier. And Ghost Walker to move through enemies unhindered and getting more movement speed when we are Unstoppable. Uh, the shockwave aspect on our weapon to get 200% move, uh, 200% uh, extra damage when we uh, pulverize. So we're putting it this on the weapon because we want to get the double, uh, the double amount from the aspect when we're putting it on the weapon. We get 1.5 the amount on our amulet for uh, retaliation. Like I said, 60% damage when um, we are fully fortified. Uh, Earthline Horror on a ring, so Pulverize now also an Earth skill, and then Earth skill slows, and then we get some extra synergies. Um, and then we go we go with the Umbral aspect on our ring, so I only have the one from the Codex, but if you find one that has two, three, or four, this will increase your spirit um, uh, generation dramatically, basically. Uh, if you have a four Umbral, this is basically infinite spirit with your Pulverizes. So... Uh, that is it for the aspects. Now let's go for the gear affixes. I'm still going for maximum life. Uh, by the way, guys, I'll have the link again in the description below. So the link with all of the uh, perfect affixes that you want on your gear, but I'll just go over what I have right now. Still maximum life, cooldown, life on kill, and total armor on my helmet here. Um, here uh, on your chest piece, if you don't have a, uh, a unique chest piece, Insatiable Fury, just for the damage, by the way, uh, you want to go with something uh, kind of like what you have on your pants, which is going to be only defensive stats. So any damage reduction, total armor, armor in wearable form, although you cannot get this on your on your chest piece. Um, but yeah, armor in wearable form is really good. It's a multiplicative um, armor multiplier with total armor. So 
very good to have for our build. Uh, damage reduction while fortified. You could even go maximum life if you have a very nice roll, although maximum life is not the optimal roll you can get here. Anything that is defensive on your chest and your pants is really good. On your gloves, you want to go with ranks to pulverize, attack speed, critical strike chance, and willpower. Uh, I've done a little bit of math, so like willpower seems to be better than uh, critical strike damage here. So that is why you go for willpower. On your boots, you want to go for, well, what I have is movement speed, dodge chance against distant enemies, willpower, and intelligence. Basically, I'm just trying to get as much movement speed here. I'd like to have like movement speed and movement speed after killing an elite on my boots. But uh, unfortunately, I don't. Uh, the other stats I would like to have is damage reduction while injured and possibly spirit cost reduction. Or all stats could be also good or willpower. Uh, all stats mainly to reach certain Paragon nodes uh, bonuses on your Paragon board. For your weapon, you really want will uh, vulnerable damage and willpower. That is like 100%. And then the other stats, they don't really matter too much. I mean, you can't get like any, any sort of damage increase. Critical strike damage, critical strike damage with earth skills. Uh, you could get like all stats, you could get like anything else goes in here. As long as you have like vulnerable damage and willpower, um, you'll be good. Uh, for your amulet, uh, you want to have movement speed again. Uh, movement speed, total armor, I'd say are the two most important ones. And then you can go for more defensive. Uh, you can go like for damage reduction while fortified and damage reduction. Or you could go for like a passive here. Like I have plus three ranks of crushing hurt now. So crushing earth gives us... Um, damage to earth skills when you deal damage to slowed enemies. So that is why uh, we're getting all the, all the time slow. So just an extra uh, an extra damage boost for uh, speed farming. For our ring, I'm going for close enemies, critical strike chance, vulnerable, and maximum life. Ideally, here you do have uh, crit vulnerable, maximum life, and uh, critical strike damage. So same for the other ring, but these are the stats that I have right now. Um, and then now let's go into the sockets. We're socketing rubies and not sapphires because rubies are just generally better for the druid, especially with our paragon board where we're grabbing percentage life. Uh, rubies are just always available and you are not going to be all the time fortified when you're pushing nightmare dungeons. So like 99% of the time, rubies are going to be better. In our weapons, we're putting uh, emeralds to get critical strike damage to vulnerable enemies. We're making enemies vulnerable with our uh, exploit glyph. And for our hearts here, I am using right now the uh, the barber heart. So I'm using the barber for um, uh, my amulet. So basically what this does, it, it takes... Um, the enemy will take no damage, but essentially it stores all the damage and then multiplies it by... Uh, my damage stored is uh, increased by 14% per second for 3.2 seconds before it explodes. Although if you reach the like the damage um, threshold where the mob would die, he does explode for the damage. So um, it does not really slow you down, and it just does more damage if uh, if the mob survives, right? Um, Devious heart here. Uh, the enemy pulled towards you when you have your ultimate skill up. So I am using petrify. So that is why um, every time we petrify, we stun everything, we grab everything towards us, and we can just like blow them up. Especially with the Barber, this is like a really good combination. And then the Brutal Heart, just for extra tankiness, like suppresses 18.5% of the damage. Um, so that is it for the Hearts. Let's now go into the Skill Tree. Um, actually, let's go into the Spirit Boons. Spirit Boons, we take Wariness, Damage Reduction for Elites. Swooping Attacks for 10% Attack Speed. Bolster to Fortify for 50% of your maximum life when you use a Defensive Skill. So when we're going to use Blood Howl or Earthen Bulwark, we're going to Fortify. This will keep our Fortify up nicely. Uh, I'm still using Obsidian Slam. Um, I could possibly use Masochistic. I could possibly replace Obsidian Slam by like 5% crit or like health or crit damage here. Because um, like Overpower works as uh, your life and your Fortify are added at to the attack afterwards and then multiplied by your Overpower stat, which scales with like your Willpower and like not, not nothing much, right? It doesn't scale with Vulnerable. It doesn't scale with all the other stats. It's kind of like a thing of its own. But it, like the amount of willpower you have will scale your overpower percentage. Um, I still feel like it's kind of worth it at level 85, but um, I will probably remove this as we get higher in levels. And Calm Before the Storm, uh, just to basically reset our Petrify as much as possible. And uh, yeah, basically. There's nothing else really we could get. Uh, masochistic for higher Nightmare Dungeon pushing, probably. 
But uh, yeah, for now, I'm still using this. I'm still speed farming. Uh, let's go into our skill tree. So we're still using wind shear for the movement speed, and it just feels good to have like a um, a range ability. We could be using storm strike, but I really prefer movement speed. Movement speed. Sorry, guys. Uh, for now, uh, still going into pulverize with the pulverize uh, enemies hit with pulverize deal 20% reduced damage. Uh, for our passive in here, we go predatory instinct for 6% crit against close. Go movement speed when we use blood howl. And then we have damage reduction while we are in wearable form. Um, wild impulses for core skill deal 15% increased damage and cost a little bit more spirit. So this is for damage. This is our earthen bulwark, which gives us a barrier around us. Uh, we only need to have this stop this point in here for unstoppable. This synergizes with our boots that gives us unstoppable and move in speed when we are unstoppable. So this is why we take this. So every time we use earth and bulwark, we'll get a nice move in speed increase. Uh, Blood Howl basically synergizes with Digitigrade Gate for the 9% movement speed since this persists after being in Werewolf form. Uh, and we reset the cooldown every time we kill something. So we'll pretty much always have this up. And then we also generate 20 Spirit. If you're good on Spirit, you can switch to 15% attack speed instead. Uh, Clarity for even more Spirit when we transform to human form, which we'll always be doing because we're going to be swapping between Wind Shear and Pulverize all the time. Uh, we have one point into Trample to go into the Casting Trample, grants 40 Spirit. So basically, um, a very, very nice and strong Spirit Generator here. Crushing Earth, which I have on my Amulet as well, so it's giving me 30% increased damage against slowed enemies, which is really nice because they're always slowed. And while you have Fortify, over 50% of your maximum life, your Earth skill deals 12% increased damage. So basically more damage there. Damage here, damage here, damage there. This one is triple because we swap, we swap between... Um, Wind Shear and Pulverize all the time. So between a Storm skill and an Earth skill, the damage is going to be tripled. Uh, we go with Petrify, basically just um, stuns every enemy in range. And it does increase critical strike damage to, uh, to bosses by 50%. So it's very nice on bosses as well. And then it also gives you 25 Spirit when um, you're killing an enemy that is, that is affected by a Petrify. So if you're Petrifying stuff, grabbing all the monsters uh, toward you and then killing them, you'll basically be able to spam um, Pulverize infinitely until they're all dead. Uh, Shapeshifting, damage, and then damage reduction here. Um, yeah, and then uh, Earthsign Strength for maximum life and damage while healthy. So 30% increased damage is very nice, and we're playing hardcore, so the extra, the extra life is um, very much welcome here. Let's go into the Paragon board. So nothing really changed from the last time. Um, we kept the same board. We continued towards getting Earth and Devastation. So our Earth skill deal 30% increased damage to enemies afflicted by crowd control. So that's a very nice damage boost. And then we also went in here and grabbed the Werber uh, with the bonus here to gain access to um, increased damage while in Werber form and also damage reduction while in Werber form. So these are the steps that we took so far. Uh, the rest is the same as before, Ancestral Guidance, Survival Instinct, uh, grabbing some total armor and wearable form and stuff. So the next board that we're going to go for is going to be getting some vulnerable um, vulnerable damage and crit damage and some life. So, all right, so that pretty much covers the build. Um, I will do some more updates as we level up again, and we'll do Nightmare Dungeon 100 and see how it goes when we reach level 100. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you guys in the next video.